Hey guys, I'm here with Atia. She's uh, she specializes in custom designing uh, home and wait, not just homes but cabinets and uh, what is it? Kitchens? No kitchens. No cabinets, kitchens. television units, walk-in closets, garages, Murphy beds, office rooms, library, kids' rooms. Like yeah, Bar. this is awesome because um, as you guys know. When it comes to selling the bigger uh, ticket items, you know, things that are custom, a lot of people um, kind of, you know, drop the ball, right? A lot of the traditional sales techniques don't really work. Like, you know, quick, ma'am, do you want the red or blue? Or like, you know, price goes up tomorrow. That thing doesn't really fly when you're trying to deal with somebody who wants to buy something that's like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. So uh, we're going to be interviewing her and getting some really cool nuggets on her techniques on some of the selling stuff she does. So um, anyways, one of the first things I wanted to ask is um, in, in, when you walk into people's houses and they know that you are a specialist at what you do, how much would you say that helps in the overall sale? Well, like I was saying, when you walk into someone's house, you, you can't really judge. You don't know what they have, what they don't have. But... As you're walking in, as you're introducing yourself, the first question you ask, how did you find out about us, our company? And if they tell you, hey, I found out about you guys through Google, then you know for sure that they have done some sort of research on you. That they know, as soon as you go to our website, it, it's, it's so professionally done and it's so beautiful. People know that this is not a cheap company. This is not someone who comes from like, you know, some handyman company, mom and pop shop. This Sorry. is an experienced company. They've been in business for X amount of time and they know what they're doing. Now, sometimes they'll say living resource, which is a type of magazine. That magazine tends to have other companies that are not necessarily the best. Yeah, they can build closets, but they don't use the best type of material to build a closet. So... Cool. As soon as you walk in, you just ask, how did you find out about us? And from there you go into pricing. Oh, something this size would cost you around this much money. How does that sound? And then they'll tell you, oh, that sounds wonderful. Let's get, let's get this thing going right now. Or they'll say, oh, that's a little too much. Then you ask them, what, what are you willing to spend? Like, what's your budget? Sometimes people are hesitant. They don't want to tell you about their financials because sometimes it can be embarrassing. You know, I don't want to tell you that I can't afford it. And sometimes, you know, you really have to get down to their level and and just be very personable and just say, look, I want to help you. I want to give you the closet that you want, the closet that's going to work for you, and it's within your budget. So help me by letting me know what the range is so that I'm not designing something way out of your budget. But at the same time, I want to give you something that, you know, you want and it will work for you and your price. Cool. So at that time, people will either say one, sure, or two, I got to talk to my husband. You know, he's not home. Now for the husband part, do you ever make, make sure that before you, you know, go in and you spend all that time, do you ever try to make sure that, hey, are both decision makers at home, anything like that? I don't always do it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't because I feel like that that's a little, it can get a little too personal. Got it. So when I, when I do, when they give me the husband excuse or husband uh, barrier, I guess, I say, well, you knew I was coming to your house. You must have spoken to your husband about this, right? And they're like, yeah. I said, great. So... What you get talk about? Like, you know, I really try to get to the, what is it? Like, and, and sometimes, <laughs> sometimes after they run out of options, like, oh, that it's really not the husband, it's just blah, 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 or I need to collect quotes and this and this and that. That's when you just say, okay, well, you have a price in mind. Go ahead and collect all the quotes from other companies and let's sit back together and compare them together. And see what's the best option for you. And then would you leave and le like actually let them have you back? Yes, what's the I, ratio you would say that they have you back? Um, it's for, well, they don't actually have me come there. They come to the showroom. 
Oh, they come to showroom. Got it, got it. Yeah, because I tell them, look, the next time we meet, come to our showroom. Look at our product. Feel it. Touch it. Play with it. See what you're really getting before you spend all that money. I said, and I tell them, it's an investment. This is your house. This is not someone else's apartment. Mm. So you want to make sure you're making the correct investment into something. And you're not having to keep investing because the first time didn't go right. So I'll just invite them to the showroom. And I tell them, and I always tell them, look, worst case scenario, you don't like it. The price is too much. Okay. So you walk out. You leave. You don't have to buy from me. I'm not going to force you. Got it, got it. Okay, that sounds good. Well, when you, when you make people, like, believe in the product, like, you have to love your job. Like, I love my job. And people see that in me, that I love my job. You know, it's yeah. it's not, you can't fake it. Yeah, for sure. So whenever you're in sales, you got to love what you do. you got to love. If you're selling, so you have to love that product. You have to know every part of it. Yeah, yeah, no, it's it's gonna be a disaster. Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna be dragging yourself around. It's not gonna work out well, especially in sales. And people know when you're nervous and when you don't know about the product that you're selling. They know they're not stupid. They're like, uh, she doesn't know anything. <laughs> they can sense that. So it's product knowledge is the key to selling. Product yeah. knowledge, awesome, yeah. awesome. Um, all right. So so far, what I have. You know, I'm going to translate a bit in terms of what it could mean for the roofing industry and, you know, feel free to come in uh, depending on what I'm taking. Basically, how this was translated, guys, is that, okay, first thing, um, as she said, you know, a professional website is nowadays, that could be the first impression they see of your company, right? They do a little bit of research and they go, you know, back and forth. They don't just look at one before they called you. So asking them you know, where did you find us is, you know, you, you kind of get a little shot at what they already know about you before you, it gives you a placement of where to go from, right? Um, after that, I would say, as she said, you know, a lot of the place that people uh, come from is this magazine. So this is something that has been going on for a long time. You know, if you are in the local um, newspaper, the press releases, the magazines, and that has even a little bit information about you that is consistent, it's going to add on and play a big part over the long time because um you know more people see it they talk about it etc um social media too like like right? we're on instagram we're on facebook people they're you know there's you have the new generation and you have the old school folks yeah exactly generation definitely puts a lot of mind to facebook and instagram and pinterest yeah, yeah. I, I was telling a roofer not too long ago, I'm like, hey, th this seems like a you know a game for the new ones, but Facebook, if you live your life from like a user experience point of view, you know, where you're just like living it as you go, you'll be able to talk about stuff that no other marketing, you know, like not a guy behind the computer can come with. Like I can't exactly come with, with keyword research exactly what people are thinking. You know what these homeowners, what their concerns are. Every time you come up with a good concern, if you do a little bit shot at like, you know, how it was and how you overcame it or like, you know, what kind of, uh, what answer you gave her even and you put it on Facebook in a little snippet or a little YouTube video, um, it's going to go far, right? You know, it catapults because you're the business owner. You live this, you breathe this every day and you're able to put out content because that's what it comes down to. You know, social media, you're just putting out like another channel form of content out there and it'll go really far. So um, that's another thing that I would really... Yeah. And have your existing client that you have already done something with or done something for, have them go into social media and leave you a review. Because exactly. reviews help me tremendously. Okay. So okay. you're like, oh, I, I specifically asked for a Thea. I specifically want a Thea as my designer. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Why, why is that? Oh, I read a review on Google about her. She's the you're so happy. Like, I want her. I want to work with her. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. Yeah, know? a good way to get that, um, I've been also thinking, is 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 little, like, because what happens is a lot of times these roofing companies, they have a crew, right? They have, they, they have a decent amount of um, structure, so they have a crew who goes down. Now, when I when I tell them, like, hey, guys, make getting the review part of the entire process. Like, when the job is done and stuff, you uh, the one I, I teach is, like, hey, ask them. 
ma'am, what would you rate us out of five today? When you're face to face, you know, people will say a five, unless you did something disastrous, like they'll say yeah. a five because they're not going to give you a three face to face. When they say a five, then you say, hey, I'm going to text you this little link right now and you send this link and they can review your review right then and there, right? So that's yeah. the one I'm doing. And um, yeah, so that that's going to help that's tremendously. That's what I do. I have it on my cell phone and I just shoot them the link because people, they have Yelp already on their phone. They already have Gmail. Okay. So they just click it and it takes them right there. Right Opens up, the logs in. And just submit it, that's it. Perfect, it's done. perfect. All right, awesome. The other thing you said was like, um, if if it doesn't close, or sometimes you invite them for a second time to come to the showroom, right? Um, a roofing contractor usually wouldn't do that, you know, come to the office. Well, I mean, you guys sometimes do. But what I get out of that for us is that if we can involve other forms of senses, it's going to sound weird, but like she said, you know, get them to feel the fabric, what they're doing. If you can show them certain parts that you take even little samples, you can even make this up, right? Like little samples of the wood that is different than most of the companies that you use. And you can be like, ma'am, feel this. You can be start showing them an angle that she never felt before. She's going to be sitting down there and being able to um, smell, maybe feel the wood that's going to be up there. And you're going to be able to tell her some facts about and the benefits of having this kind versus others. And it's going to involve more of the whole experience than just, you know, you telling her, you know, what, what it's going to be happening, right? Get her to basically be involved in the process that, yeah. that you're in it for. Like, make sure your clients know what they're getting. That's, that's really it, you know? People can say, oh, you're going to get this, 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 this. I have no idea what. It's just what like words it? to them. You want to make sure they feel, understand exactly yeah. the difference. Like, oh, my money is going towards this. Okay, this is the product I'm getting. Got it. This is why it cost X amount of dollars. Okay. Awesome, so awesome. It helps to let them see it. Okay, okay. Cool, cool. Um, have you ever had a point where, um, you know, like, like you said, you have you have like a few people that got quotes, you know, that that's what they're doing. You know, they're just collecting quotes. They're just one of those people and they're going to choose one. Now, have you ever had a point where you are, you know, the most expensive by far or maybe like, you know, second highest and you had to like kind of make them understand why is it your price is so much higher? Yes. Yes. And what would there you say? There's certain things that are, you know, in those situations, common denominators that always, you know, help out if you were to do it. Sometimes if a quote is difference of $500, I will say, you know, fine, sure, I'll take the $500 off and I'll give you the same thing. And then there's times where people come in with a quote and then they'll say, oh, I have a design too. And then I'll look at their design and then I'll look at my design and I'll say, hmm, you only have four shelves. I'll give you eight shelves. That explains why he's less than I am. He gave you way less than I did. Oh, my drawers are 16 inches deep. His is 14. There's another factor. So okay. people don't, they, you have to make them visual. You have to make them see it. All they see end of the day is she's $1,200 and she's $2,400. Exactly. That's it. They don't, even, they don't even see what they're getting for that amount of money. But when you put the two pictures next to each other and you're like, oh, you don't have this, 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 they're like, oh, I don't? Oh, I thought I did. Oh, oh. And that's like, voila. So like you got to make sure, like, they, you know, you really take them through it. Like, you know, our one's more expensive because of this, this. It's not just like, you know, you don't get startled like, oh, they said 1600 Damn, like, my one's like 2500 You get like, okay, so what did you get for 1600 ma'am? Let's look, take a look. Exactly. Okay, okay. Exactly. I and get down to the details because I honestly I've done a lot of research before getting into this business. I called four closet companies to my own house. Okay. I bought my own closet out, and then I bought oh. my own closet out, and I looked at the pricing. And I oh, said, okay, crazy. okay, and I said, and I wrote after they left, I wrote a report. I said, okay, this guy offered this, 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 this is what he got to. And then I look and I compare how how do I c compare to my competition? It's very important. I don't know if every designer does that, but I definitely did because I needed to know what I'm up against. And okay. the only company that I saw that had some game like us was California Closet. 
They've been in the business just as long as we have been. But they've built differently. That was the main difference. They're a hung, wall hung system. We're a floor base. What does that mean? More stability, stronger, last longer. Right there. They're weak. They're, that's their weakness. Okay, that's their weakness. You know, that's their weakness. They don't, they don't, they can't. Just Even differentiate then, with the main competitor off the bat. <laughs> yeah, because if you're going to hang a refrigerator on the, on the wall, eventually with time, it will collapse. Okay. So that's how I looked at it. And that's what I, I think that, that helped me a lot. So um, a lot of these guys don't use good good melamine. They use crappy Home Depot crap that gets made in China. You take a melamine, you cut it in half, you're going to find copper. You're going to find fabric. Uh, little screwdrivers. Okay, it's not like, like pure. No, it's not pure. Ours is pure. Pure, pure, pure. And we don't hide our material. We leave a raw edge. So they can see the inside. Got it, show got it. This is the product you're getting. So most of the time, from my experience, the pricing has been by two, three hundred dollars off here and there. But if I see it's the exact same design, they're giving them exactly the same thing, then I just I don't battle it, you know? I'm like, fine, okay, yeah, sure, three hundred dollars off. There you go. Got Price it, match. <laughs> but if I notice that they're not giving you what they what I'm giving you. That's not fair. Yeah, that, that's that doesn't just work. not fair. You gotta know that. Yeah, also, so then I start cutting, taking things off. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 one thing I realized too. It, it works, uh, with, you know, for for my business when I work with clients. You know, if they if they're just too much wrestling with the price, I'm like, all right, so we don't need this, this, and that, and all of a sudden they're like, wait, why, why? I thought it's all in one package, and they start, you know, at least coming halfway between what they originally said, you know. So that's cool. The one another thing I want to ask is uh, okay. So recently, um, we've been working with a with a roofing company that's like they are doing great marketing. They're doing great social media. They're they're spending so much money on everything present, you know, with presentations. But they were lacking where the rubber meets the road, which was phone calls, right? How you receive the phone when you call people to let them know that you're going to set an appointment. Uh, those things really have to be scheduled in, dialed in, almost verbatim. Do you have some kind of um, uh, do you use some kind of like you know script every time or no but this is how it works with us wherever it is that we're advertising wherever it is that they got the lead from our phone number's there you call the number and it's like a traditional voice thing like thank you for calling the closet factory we'll be right with you you know your call might be monitored for whatever purposes etc someone answers the phone hi how may we help you I'd like to make an appointment. Okay, what day? This day. What time? This time. Great. I have a designer. I'm going to send her over. Her name is Athea. She will be calling you to confirm this appointment before she gets to your house. Okay. So right there, you're setting up that, like, wow, confirmation. Because a lot of companies, a lot of designers, they don't confirm. They're afraid they they'll cancel, up, right? <laughs> yeah. They either show up late. Or on the day of, they'll be like, oh, I'm here. Like, <laughs> out of the, we, uh, every single designer always calls and confirms. Hey, I'm coming over at this time. This is when you made the appointment. Is it still a good timing for you? Yes, it is. Great. You show up. And my thing, I'm very punctual, but I'm always on the dot. So mm -hmm. I will leave my house early. To make get sure you're there on time. On time. If the appointment's at 10, I'm knocking your door at 10, not 10 or 1 or 9, you know, 9.59, at 10, I'm knocking. That's another thing that's like, oh, because the culture in Miami, not every state, but in, particularly in Miami, all vendors are never on time. That's another weakness they have. Got it, got it. Makes sense. Cool, cool. So that, but you that makes have a that phone. Bit. Like, when somebody calls, you want to have that professional, Tone you know, right nice from the back. Reading, yeah, right from the back, you want to have a nice green setup and always smile. Like, there's some salespeople that are just, I don't know, just, they're just bitter people, you know? Yeah, for sure, for sure. <laughs> I'm very energetic. I'm very, I'm like a, like this one lady I went to her house today, she's like, she's like, the moment you walked into my house, she's like, I just felt this energy from you. You're, you're very lively and, and, and like bubbly. And I'm like, I know, 
want me to tone it down, I will. And she's like, no, 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 I don't, I don't want you to do that. And I'll say, great, wonderful. So the more you are yourself, the more personable you are, the more people like you. That's awesome, that's awesome. Yeah, that actually reminds me of like um, one, of, one of my clients. He, I mean, he's still my client. And I, I see that he works from home. By so basically what this is, is like a lead company that sends them like, you know, four or five leads to the same person and you have to win it. So this guy is like, you know, he's, he's winning over 70% of the bids, right? So I asked him like, you know, what's your strategy? So he said that from the time I, you know, answered the phone, I, I walked them through the whole experience even before I get there. I tell him, ma'am, I'm going to knock at your door at exactly this time. Then I'm going to show you what's wrong with this. Then I'm going to take you through the solution pattern of what's, what we're going to do this, this. And then after a while, we're going to have a little sit down of how everything comes down to and the finances. Yeah. And if everything looks good, is it, is it, is it good? And then they, he says that that blows them away, that they feel at comfort, all their insecurities that they had, uh, fears with these kind of situations are down. They know that at least dealing with a professional, whatever is going to happen. And yeah, so. Another thing helps is when you call the client to confirm the appointment, usually when we make the appointment, we take their email, we take their phone number, their address and everything. So when I call to confirm the night before, I said, by the way, I'm going to send you an email with all the customer reviews that I have for myself. I just want you to take a look before I come into That's your house so awesome. you get to know me a little better before I'm there. So I send them like all these reviews and they're like, oh, wow, wow, people love her. Da, da, da. And then they feel comfortable. They're like, How do you ask for the email? Put it down. Hmm? How do you ask for the email? When they call for the, to make an appointment. You said, oh. okay, your name, can we have your email? Yes. Don't, oh, okay. don't, we tell them we're not going to send you marketing material. We just want the email so the designer has it in case he or she may need to send you a quote. Got it, got it. Okay. That's a yeah, pretty we, cool one. I never have, heard of that. You yeah, send them the reviews particularly for you on, in an email before you get there. Before I get okay, there. Okay. Because I want them to know. This is Athea, this yeah. is how she works, and this is who she is. And when they see all those five-star ratings, they inst instantly, that guard, like, it's down. It's mm -hmm. down. It's, it's totally, they're chill. Like, when they open that door, hey, good mm -hmm. to see you. Like, I'm so excited. I'm so, like, they're happy. That's awesome. Obviously, That's awesome. when I started, I couldn't do that. But as I'm building up my portfolio, I've started to do that because that's what's going to help me exceed at my job. Okay, okay. So I could, I didn't have any reviews. Now I do. So I just send them the link. I also send them a bio of me. There's a page on our corporate website that talks about who I am, what background I come from, what are my hobbies, and if it says I like drifting cars. So <laughs> you, people really get to know you. You know, and I send them that link too. I'm like, here's a little bit about me. That's really, that's really awesome you say that because like I've been I've been also thinking about something similar in a way for a lot of times uh, guys this is for every company who's trying to be something they're not right what happens is these roofing companies they're maybe like a one-man show and um, you know they, they have maybe a small crew but because of competition what they do they make their website as if they're like a multi fortune yeah. thousand conglomerate and like we're like hey no you're a small business, use that as your advantage. Have an about me page where you're there with your dog, where you come from, you care about these people, the community around you and stuff like that. And that's gonna be the advantage. That's how you take over. If you if you hide, you know, like who you are as a person, uh, yeah. people people don't really relate to it. You know, yeah. you only have that much time in that short whatever, 30, 40 minutes with them. So you wanna use all the ammo you have. So um pers personable, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Personable um, you know, approach. Alrighty, so we're almost at 25 minutes, Athea. Um, do you think there's any other stuff that I didn't ask would be good for the sales side overall? I don't think so. I think we pretty much covered everything. Um, just be yourself. Be honest. Don't be shady. Um, treat them like you want to be treated, really. That's all that is. Treat them how you want to be treated. And not everything's going to be a positive, but, you know, yeah. like I told you earlier, the lady fell in love with me. Oh, I love you. I'm going to recommend you. I'm going to refer you. However, 
I can't use you. That's because of my personal financial issues. Okay, but okay. I, I'm going to refer you to all my friends. Yeah, it makes sense. In that way, it, that's a sale too, in, in some sense. You know, yeah, yeah, exactly. So you always want to leave with a good impression and you always want to come in with a good impression. You never want to leave with like a negative exactly, you know, exactly. judgment. And uh, listen, listen, very key ingredient, always listen. Exactly. The client talking, shut up. You listen. Listen to their needs, what they want, da, 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 and then you talk. Sometimes salesmen, you know, they're just like ba 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 ba, and the guy's like, but but I what? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, let them say that, that happens. Can... Yeah, you gotta like let them say, and a lot of times what they say, you find out their pain points. It helps compared to yeah. you like sh stuffing down your agenda. <laughs> and and samples, dude, very important. Carry your stuff with you. Carry your samples. materials with you. That's okay, very. That goes important. on to adding here, right? With the yeah. feel, feel, and you know, have product samples. Okay. Client review, we already went over that. Mm -hmm. Try to get as many positive reviews as you can. And if there is a negative review, let's say the company just received a negative review, have the ownership involved. Like my boss reaches out to the client. What happened? Please tell us. How can we do better? This is a huge thing, actually. It's a, it's a big problem in... Um, in the you know in the, in our industry as well, people people um, you know ask me all the time because I do SEO, so they ask me like, hey, how can we like drown out this review? I'm like, is there a way we can like, because there's no way Google's gonna take it down unless it's like actually validly supposed to be taken down. So you know, we say like, reach out to them, see if you can um, you know have some kind of like you know second chance to go out and maybe do a favor or you know give them a whatever it takes to like. But like you know, the point is not to just be quiet or or be yeah. Don't brush it off. Like, don't say, oh, that's just one negative review. Shit happens. And you, no, 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 you don't do that. Somebody leaves you a negative review, there's got to be a reason why. So you try to get to that problem. You say, you know, what is it that we can do to, to fix this? Or how can we make you happy? No. There are times where people are a little too much. And they're yeah. like, oh, I want the whole entertainment center for free. You know? <laughs> It is always going to be one crazy in every like 30, 40. It's not going to happen, but by you being a company owner and replying to that client, whatever issues they may have, other people see that. And they yeah. say, wow, they actually care. They're actually taking actions towards something that someone left negative. And yeah, you, yeah. They, they, they read it. Okay, this is side one. We both have two sides, right? You have the client, you have the ownership. And they read both of them, and they're like, "Oh, well, you know what? This client, no, yeah, Maybe. yeah, Not no, me. that makes sense. You know, you're actually, yeah, that actually, that's actually perfectly correct. Because sometimes I, this even happened to me in my experience. Like, I see some, I see a bad review, but then I see like the review was like, you know, was using a bit of foul language and stuff. And the owner comes in and uses like proper language and shows them why they're, you know, actually kind of wrong and, you know, what they would be willing to do if they come and I, I, you actually get respect. It actually turns it around yeah, in a way. You're right. Read both sides. They're yeah. not just going to read one side and right away judge you. No, they're yeah. going to read both sides and they're going to say, oh. Yeah, yeah, that's no, it's, it's, it's that's, that's so true. It's just really important to have a way to keep on getting good reviews because the, by default, the people who are going to actually take the time and go and leave a review just happens to be the people who are mad or like, you know, like if you, if you don't have any review. Oh, yeah. You know what all I mean? All the time. All yeah. the time. All the time. People are like, you can, there's, okay, look, there's been one client. She loves me. Yet, she's not leaving me a review. And I've been chasing her for a positive review. Okay. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, had there been one little mistake? She would have been on Google like, hey. Yeah, because exactly. People are more driven when you do something wrong. Yeah, that's the that's just how it is. People give their aggression out. They want to just, you know, bash you online and that and go crazy. But when it comes to leaving positive reviews, the goal is before you leave the house. You really mean I don't go when the day of the job, when it gets installed, I go. I show my face. Hi, I'm here. I'm the project manager. I'm here to make sure everything goes well. Okay, Instantly, okay. they're like, wow, she's actually here to make sure that goes well. Showing a lot of up. do that. A lot of designers don't do that. They sell it and they disappear. Big no. Jobs. 
this is for all all of you who sends just to your crew if it's especially a big job make sure you go shake okay. their hand <laughs> yes yes after the job finish it how do you like it did we are we up to your expectations did, did we do a good job would you recommend this wonderful please write us a review here's the link like don't be afraid you know I, I take my phone out and I'm like hey look I just sent you a link go write me a review since I'm here let's just get it out of the way you know yeah that's and awesome like, oh. yeah, yeah when you're face to face people will leave you reviews left and right if you leave them the link and you leave it, it's Forget Even if you let them the re like link, like they could just click. No, they will forget. They will forget, and then you will just feel embarrassed to keep following up. You're gonna be like, I want to just forget it. I'm just gonna give up. Yeah. But consistency, very important. Uh, don't be afraid. You know what's the worst? No. Yeah, you exactly. We were in sales already, so hey, this is just another little sale for helping the long run. Awesome, awesome. Okay. All right, Athia. Thank you so much for joining us. This is some super good nuggets. You know, we're both in the similar business of getting people to believe in their home, you know, renovations. And um, I'm sure this is going to help a lot of people when they watch this in terms of making their sales process a lot better. Yeah. Oh, by the way, one last thing. The Little Red Book of Sales. Oh, you That's told me about it. Guys, get this book. Okay. Yeah. Hold book on. recommendation. Okay, the little red book of sales. It's by yeah. who? Cherry something? Jeffrey Gittemeyer. Jeffrey Gittemeyer. Gittemeyer. Okay, probably gonna butcher that name. Oh no, I got it. Jeffrey Gittemeyer. It's freaking Bible for sales. All right, and okay. I'll okay. definitely have that in in the description, guys. So you can go and check that out with the link in Amazon. Um, but yeah, thank you for coming in. You're welcome. Bye. <laughs>